Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. I am on the Raid Shadow Legends test server. Big shout out to Plarium for letting me come on the test server to show you all of this stuff early. And we have eight new champions to show you in today's video coming in this patch. Four legendaries, four epics. There is, a, there's actually 10 new champions. There's an extra legendary and epic. I believe I, by the time this video goes live, I should already have a video on those two champions out on the channel already. They are insane. <laughs> insane part of the new referral program make sure you go watch that video first as well or watch it after this one whatever you want to do you know it, it's your choice you do what you want to do but let's dive in to uh, let's look at the four new legendaries coming first that are not part of that referral program so the first one we want to look at in the game obviously we've seen a preview of his kit already it's lanathoril right the new fusion so this guy is going to be part of the fusion it's a hybrid fusion and let's take a look at his kit so his a1 gallantry attacks one enemy decreases the target's max hp by 30 percent of the damage inflicted shield buff equal to 10 percent of this champion's max hp for two turns on the ally with the lowest hp uh, one thing i'm going to try in this video which is a bit new is i'm going to because i can do this in advance on the test server i'm actually going to edit in the animations for the skills so you can see what the skills look like let me know if you like that if you think it's cool i just thought it'd be a fun thing to put into the video make me do some you know frenchy schmanchy editing things uh, so it'll be fun his a2 flicker barrier this does get two books off the cooldown three turn cooldown when fully booked attacks all enemies shield buff on all allies for three turns equal to 20 percent of this champion's max hp if there's any dead allies places a shield buff on all allies for three turns equal to 30 percent of this champion's max hp instead and this buff cannot be removed stolen transferred spread or have its duration increased or decreased by enemies or allies his a3 ability finest hour six turn cooldown does book to a four turn cooldown places 30 percent increased crit damage buff on all allies for two turns then teams up with all allies to attack a single enemy his passive piercer inflicts 20 percent more damage against targets under shield buffs and then he does have a 35 percent ally hp in doom tower battles aura base stats he's actually got very solid base hp it's you know slightly above average i'd say for a hp based champion that's really good he's got great defense along with it respectable speed 57 percent crit damage isn't bad it's 63 is the highest but 57 again is a little bit above average and then 50 base resistance is really really strong he does not need accuracy so you could totally build him with high resistance if you wanted to he's got sort of the basis for it there um, I will be doing a full play test of him and that video will probably be out really shortly after this one I haven't play tested him yet, but my initial impressions. I'm pretty happy with the books He's gonna get like 20% more damage from books three turn cooldown on this four turn cooldown on this is pretty much as expected Good base stats actually maybe even slightly better than expected. I think he's looking like a really solid champ We'll talk more about him though in the actual play test now Let's jump over to a champ that I may be even more excited for we have a new Void Legendary in the Orc faction, Raka Viletide, who looks just absolutely incredible. She's got this awesome banner, which is just oozing with style, huh? Uh, and then some kind of funky wings on her back as well. So she looks insane. She is a support champion. Let's take a look at her skill set then. Her A1, Icker of Life, attacks one enemy, heals the ally with the lowest HP by 10% of this champion's max HP, gets a bit more damage and healing from the books. Her A2, Oozing Blessing, four turn cooldown, books to a three turn cooldown, removes all debuffs from all allies, then places 50% increase attack buff and shield buff equal to 25% of this champion's max HP on all allies for two turns and 20% more shield power there from books. Her A3 ability, Plasm Rebirth, six turn cooldown, books to a four turn cooldown, revives all dead allies with 50% HP, 50% turn meter, then places block debuffs on all allies for two turns. We'll place the block debuffs even if there are no dead allies. Her passive, Creep, three turn cooldown, books to a two turn cooldown. So the bit that has the cooldown to it is the active effect. At the start of each turn, fills the turn meter of all allies by 10%. So she can do this every second turn, basically. Then the passive effect, which doesn't go on cooldown, just happens every turn. At the start of each turn, places a 15% continuous heal buff on the ally with the lowest HP for two turns. Will not place the continuous heal buff on this champion. And then finally, she's got a 19% ally speed in all battles aura. So I'm super excited for this champion. Like I, I tell you guys, she is amazing. I think she's fantastic. A real 
Void Legendary. And the thing I really like about her, looking at her base stats here, like almost 20k base HP, uh, 1.1k uh, defense here, 109 speed, 40 base resistance. She does not need any accuracy. And I jump over and I look at champions. I look at champions like Sifi. She's got similar stats to Sifi. Bit squishier, not quite as fast. So a little bit squishier than Sifi, but not by much. We come, we look at Duchess Lilithu. And again, she's a little bit squishier than Duchess, but not by too much. Yeah, this champion, she's got the same characteristic as both of them. They don't need any accuracy. They don't need any damage. You're just going to crank their survivability through the roof. They are these just top tier revivers. I think Duchess in particular is a really interesting counterpart. They've got the same aura. Duchess on her A1 is putting out a shield buff. Whereas uh, Raka is healing. Now Duchess gives you block debuffs, increased attack, and perfect fail on four turn cooldown. And then Duchess has a four turn cooldown AoE revive that puts out a bit of healing. And she gives you damage reduction from AoE attacks. I think Raka is basically Duchess 2.0. Basically is what she is. She's a void version of a Duchess. The same speed aura. Again, that A1. Pumping out that heal on your lowest HP ally. Then the shielding, the damage mitigation comes from this. This is a great move, oozing blessings, right? It's very like Mithrala Lifebane, the Hydra champion. It's very like her cleanse, right? Full team cleanse within a big shield. Mithrala, in contrast, gives you strength in instead of increased attack. Uh, so both are useful in their own way. I'd say Mithrala is slightly better. And as a cleanser, Mithrala with her passive, giving her basically infinite resistance. Mithrala is overall a bit stronger for Arena, but this is just an insane move. That's so much survivability for Hydra and uh, or, or just in general in arena in hydra everywhere doom tower and then aoe revive again compared to duchess slightly less hp on the revive but you get the turn meter and then instead of veil vale, you're going to get block debuffs um the one thing about her that uh, not to mention the fact that she's going to be turn meter boosting your team regularly as well and pumping out a bunch of continuous heals too very strong very very strong you know you take any of those stereotypical hydra nightmare teams where you've got duchess with krisk you put raka with krisk instead and it's going to do most of the same stuff it's going to be really effective i'd say one of the big differences is you got no veil raka does not provide any veils so against the head of torment in hydra she doesn't have that utility but she's going to bring a lot more healing than duchess and i feel like this shield is going to be pretty much equal to duchess's damage mitigation um and again, compared to Duchess without that veil in Arena, she's not going to be as good with Candrophon. Duchess really empowers Candrophon by reviving him with veil and placing perfect veil on him for a couple of turns. Raka doesn't have that synergy, uh, but apart from that, pretty nuts. And then the only other concern I have, this is the interesting one, that she uses this move, and by default she uses this as her first priority. She can use this move as just a block debuffs on your team. This is a real bummer in Arena. Right? This is a bummer in Arena because she'll use this move when people are everyone's alive just to put block debuffs on people. And then if people die after that, you're left without your revive ready to go compared to, let's say, a Duchess or a Sifi who obviously will revive when someone actually dies, you know? So that's a bit of an issue. We'll see how it works out. If they ever add fancier AI to the game where you could force her to only use this when someone's actually dead, it'd be better. But it is a bit of a concern for me right now, certainly for Arena. It's obviously not a problem on manual, but on auto and Arena defense, it's definitely an issue. Uh, for Hydra, it's actually very useful, though, because you can choose when and where to use block debuffs. So when you're coming up to a Provoke or the Head of uh, Blight putting lots of poisons on, you can throw out these block debuffs if you need it. Otherwise, you can just save this up, and you don't really need the revive very often, if at all, in Hydra if things are going right. So I am extremely hyped for this champion. Let me know what you think. I think a Mithrala-esque cleanse, uh, tons of healing, uh, an amazing AoE revive. Yeah, I think she's sort of Duchess 2.0. Um... I think, you know, a team, I don't have all these champions, but Prince Kaimar with a Sifi, a Rotos, and Raka is going to look real nasty in Arena. Prince Kaimar giving you the big speed aura, then Sifi turn meter boosting. Uh, Raka comes in, can cleanse and shield your team and give you increased attack. So Rotos can start popping off and nuking people with that increased attack. Uh, and then you got the backup revive, all the healing she's going to put out. Um, yeah, again, Mithrala would fit in that team really well. So it'll be interesting to see Raka versus Mithrala, Raka versus, du versus Duchess. But I'm hyped for her. I'm hyped for her. I'm going to try to get a video on her out as soon as possible. Um, right, next up then. Next up we have bum -ba -lum, in the Knight's Revenant. If you like Poison Explosion teams, and as you know, I love Poison Explosion teams, you're going to love Theodore the Savant. 
So his A1, sorry, stumbling over his name. I want to say Theodore, but it's Theodore. Really weird. Vile Physic is his A1. AoE attack, 30% chance books to a 50% chance of placing, 30% decreased speed for two turns. I mean, it's Crisk's A1, basically. It's a great A1 ability. Really, really strong. Um, especially, you know, it's going to be decent for Ice Golem, I'd say. And it's going to be especially decent, you know, for Doomed Tower Waves. And uh, for Hydra, really good. Though I don't know if the rest of his kit is suited for Hydra. We'll see. Savant's Savvy, his A2, four turn cooldown books to a three turn cooldown, has a 75 books to 100% chance of placing two poison debuffs and a 25% poison sensitivity debuff on all enemies for two turns. Also places a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. So, yeah, pretty exciting here as well. I think this is... Um, Let's cover his A3 first, then let's talk about the two of these together. So, Chemistry. Not Chemistry, but Chemistry. His A3 ability, 5 turn books to a 3 turn cooldown, increases the duration of all poison debuffs and HP burn debuffs on all enemies by 1 turn, then instantly activates any poison debuffs and HP debuffs on each enemy, places a weakened debuff for 2 turns on enemies not under poison debuffs or HP burn debuffs. Yeah, pretty exciting stuff. His passive Fumigator increases his resistance by 5 for every poison debuff on the enemy team. Then he's a 50 accuracy in all battles aura. Solid base stats across the board. I think this guy's very exciting. I'm very intrigued to test him out and see exactly what sort of teams we can build. Um, the fact that he is laying poisons himself uh, with poison sensitivity, and then he can increase the durations and then explode them a little bit, that is very, very interesting. So I definitely think you put him in there with like a Zavia. You put him in with like a Gerda Bogru. I've done poison explosion teams before. Lots of videos on them on my channel. You put him in with a Zavia or Elinarl, some other poisoners. You have him like one speed faster than your Zavia or Elinarl. And he's going to come in, lay out some poisons and poison sensitivity then trigger a big bunch of poison damage, and then your Xavier Elinarl, they come and blow up the rest of the poisons. You're going to easily one-shot these waves. And he's got nice short cooldowns, three turns each, so you can, again, easily use this team with Renegade. You don't need Kaimar. You can use Renegade and nuke through these waves. Um, I think he's got really good defensive stats, and with this passive, I think he could certainly be built then to solo the bosses, right? To solo the bosses, no problem. Decrease speed and increase speed is going to make a regen set really give a lot of value value on him. This is very exciting. I think he could very possibly solo all of Dragon very easily, very quickly. Um, maybe solo all of Ice Golem very easily, very quickly. I'm not sure exactly what his capabilities are, but this is an exciting champion to test. I think worst case scenario, he goes really well with like Xavia Elinarl, Dark Kale, those sorts of champs. Amazing poison explosion teams to rip through dungeons. Uh, I think best case scenario, he's going to be able to really easily solo those dungeons with a regen set himself. We shall see. But yeah, very exciting champ. And then finally, a skinwalker. Yes, we have another skinwalker. Snick track. Uh, porcupine. And man, this guy looks absolutely terrifying. Apparently, um, this was part of the champion design competition they did before. Uh, that you might recognize, uh, if you guys don't know about it, they did a champion design competition. The winner of that was actually Calvalax, and they made Calvalax in the game. So one of the runners up, I think he came third place, which is crazy because this champion's super cool, designed a champion that looks somewhat like Snick Track. I'm not sure if it's a one to one comparison. Apparently, the raid team were really inspired and they uh, they based Snick Track off that design. Uh, eventually, now, you know, a year or two down the line, I suppose. And apparently, they're going to be giving a free Snick Track to the guy that actually designed uh, it as well. And I'm going to be giving him a proper shout out in the game. So, that stuff is really, really awesome to see. But let's take a look at him. HP based legendary here, Spirit Affinity. Again, really solid defensive stats. He's nice and tanky. Lots of resistance, good base accuracy. His A1, Misery Morningstar. Attacks one enemy, 50%, books to a 60% chance of placing decreased attack for two turns. If the target's under a leech debuff, has a 100% chance of placing decreased attack on the target for two turns before attacking. Brilliant, fantastic, sort of actually a very, very consistent decrease attack on his A1. If he gets the leech out, and let me tell you, he will get leeches out. His A2 ability, Cloying Horror, four turn cooldown books to a three turn cooldown, attacks all enemies, has a 75 books to 100% chance of placing 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns, also places a shield buff on all allies, equal to 30% of this champion's max HP for two turns. Shield buff cannot be removed if it's placed when there are any enemies under leech debuffs. So a shield that cannot be removed 
And again, very easy, very easy to trigger this effect. That's very exciting for the Scarab boss unremovable shields, although we probably, most people will have Lanathoril, right, the fusion uh, champion who can do that as well quite easily. Um, but pretty exciting. It's going to be great for Hydra. just great everywhere in the game. A big shield that cannot be removed. He's got almost 23,000 base HP. All of his damage, by the way, is scaling off HP. He's This is going to be a massive shield and very easy to trigger it not being removed. On top of being an AoE attack with decreased speed. Very good move. Vermin Vitae, his A3, 5 turn, books to a 3 turn cooldown, places ally protection on all allies except this champion for 2 turns, places a reflect damage buff on all allies for 2 turns, then heals this champion by 50% of their max HP. Again, fantastic move, AoE, ally protection, the reflect damage is intriguing, come to his passive in a second, uh, and it's a massive heal for him as well, so he's going to be easy to build in a guardian set, Absorbing damage at Guardian set, ally protection, and massively healing himself. He's going to be an absolute tank. Then his passive, Soul Rot. Whenever an ally under reflect damage buff is attacked, places a leech debuff on the attacker for one turn. Reflex, 50% of the damage this champion receives, back to the attacker. Increases the amount of damage reflected by 20% from reflect damage buffs placed on this champion. By the way, he's a 33% ally HP in all battles aura. Really good aura. But this passive really brings everything together. It's pretty nuts. He's going to come in, probably on turn one, place ally protection and reflect damage on everyone. Then whenever they are attacked, he's going to place leech on the attacker. Reflect damage is a really bad, bad buff. It doesn't really do much. But he's going to increase it from a 30% to a 50% buff. 50% of all the damage your team takes is going to be reflected back. That might be enough to make it good. It's actually kind of nuts. <laughs> it's actually kind of nuts how much better he makes it. Uh, will this make it a relevant buff? I'm not sure. We're going to test it out and we'll see. I'm definitely excited by it. I'm definitely scared to ever run into him in like Doom Tower waves or something like that. This is going to be terrifying. Uh, I am also not sure how this is going to interact. Reflects 50% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker. Is that going to stack? with reflect damage on himself for 50%? Is he going to reflect 100% of the damage he receives? I think there's a good chance he might, which again is just nuts. Just nuts. Yeah, so very And then he's also bringing decreased speed and unremovable shields, decreased attack. I think this guy looks to be an absolute monster. I think he looks to be a very uh, Krisk style champion. For, uh, like, you imagine Demon Lord Clan Boss, if you're making a killable team, so not doing unkillable, making a killable team, this guy's bringing you decreased attack, he's bringing you leech, ally protection and keeping himself alive, reflect damage, massive shield as well. Like, he's bringing so much. I'm very excited to test him in Hydra, Arena. This guy looks really cool. So, yeah, they are the legendaries, and what a batch of legendaries we have.